Hey everyone, welcome to this little mini-series of tutorials where I'm going to start covering little groups of uh, items that work together and how you can program them to work together with other objects. Uh, this episode we're going to be focusing on lights and there are five different types of lights. You have the spotlight, the lamp light, the little regular light, the box light, and the uh, standing spotlight. They all have uh, the same functions and variables. No events. We don't have any linked objects yet. Um, and that's just the uh, info. Uh, but there are several uh, functions and variables, but they're all the same for each of them. And if we go here to the spotlight, you see it's exactly the same. Same with that. Um, so all the lights have uh, the same same settings as you would call it um, and we'll start right at the top with toggle light now if you've seen my previous episode you know that in order to uh, start a program you need some kind of trigger whether it's an event which there aren't any here or you need to right click the execute box and you'll see that little circle come up and you see I hit that toggle light and that light turns on and off now if we link this to a button, that makes it a lot easier. And we can say, well, from the button, um, on button push, toggle light. So now, every time we push the button, it toggles the light. Here's one of the problems I run into with that toggle. So if we... Oh, if we toggle that now, you see, I didn't set it up. Um, standing spotlight, toggle light. So now, if I do that, they both turn on and off. And here's the problem that I run into. We're going to set this up, and let's say we messed up the link or we replaced the light because it fell or for whatever reason and we go in here and now we go try and toggle that you'll see they're alternating so you have to go in and manually set it to toggle that light now they're back in line but what I like to do is make this we're going to use the next set of functions turn on and turn off but we're also going to add in a variable is it on? So we're going to say here uh, on button push we need a branch and we're going to say we push the button check if the light is on if it is turn it off if it's not turn it on clean it up a little bit so now, every time I push it, it works the same as toggling. But if we add in uh, the, you know, the standing spotlight, but then we, oh, we need to duplicate this. Uh, well, no, we'll just do it this way, just to kind of demonstrate it. There we go. Now it'll check is it on, turn it on or off. So that's pretty basic on how you know, the first few functions work. It, you know, basically turning the light on and off. Uh, brightness, that's uh, the next object or the next uh, function. And what it does is it sets the brightness. Let's make sure we're going to delete this link. Just work with the one. Um, and we're going to say, um, make sure, ah, we'll just do it by hand. We want this to be 100%. And we'll just do it that way. When we turn it on, that's 100% brightness. And then we can go down, let's say 50%. Execute. See, it's a little bit less bright. And if we go down to 10%, execute. Now it looks like it's barely even on. Uh, there are a couple of reasons you'd want the brightness that low. Uh, one of them is uh, the you can use the brightness as a counter 
or the uh, it still works if you like if you um, 100 and I'll get back to my last thought here in just a second uh, you execute it it's at 100 and let's say 50 or just to show the difference we'll go back down to 10 execute and delete that you see it's still at 10 uh, but one of the reasons you might uh, want it, the brightness to be really low or off is if you're using the light box as a counter. And what I was saying was uh, you can have set up your auto miners so that the first ore that gets pushed out turns the box on or any light or you, know, you can put a spotlight or something. Um, but any light, it'll turn it on. And then on the second one, it turns it off, and it checks, uh, the furnace will check, is the light off? And when it is, it'll turn on the furnace so that you're not wasting fuel. Um, but that's kind of the brightness. Uh, it's self-explanatory. Set color, same thing. We can change the color. Uh, we'll put that, now yeah, we'll put it at 75. Execute that. Set the color to blue. There you go. Um, black, oh, didn't execute, so now it's black, looks like 10% white though, um, orange, oh. there you go, so those are self-explanatory, fairly easy, um, these are just kind of, there's nothing really here you can input uh, for that unless you wanted to get into um, there's some more advanced there you go compare colors uh, so you can compare you know if this color is uh, uh, where is variables color so you can say uh, get the color of you know this light box and if that matches blue if they're equal so you'd have another branch here say if they're equal then you know turn off or if they're not equal, we'll do if not, that way we can demonstrate it. So now we can see, you know, if it's, you can see it turn on for a brief second and then turn off because it ran that check and said, hey, that's not equal to blue, so turn it back off. And I've got some more bots over here, I'll be right back. Okay, so, um, that's what was causing that. If we get rid of this line here, and then we do that, it'll always stay off. Well, not because of that, but because this is, it's triggering to compare the colors. If we were to say orange, um, turn on, see? But now it won't turn off because it's always orange. So uh, it can get really complicated if you uh, if you can get a lot more into it. Uh, so that's the basic functions. Um, we'll clear out some of this. Um, the variables are you've seen two of them here. Is on. Um, you know it. It's just a variable uh, or a boolean. Uh, is the light on? And then you put that into a branch or into, um, not comparisons, but uh, execution. Um, that wrong one. Uh, was it comparison? Oh, nope, down here logic. And an or. So you can put that into an and or an or. Um, so you can say, is it on, and is the color, I can't go in there, 
Oh, you need the comparison, which I deleted. Compare colors. So. Of course, you got to have something to trigger that. Um, but are they equal? And then if both values are true, turn on or turn off. Uh, I'm not sure why you would need that specific setup because I can't think of anything that you would. But that's um, uh, definitely what that variable is for. Uh, and then brightness is the same thing. You're checking um, what is the brightness of this light box. So next I'm going to take you um, to kind of one other thing I like to do with my lights. Uh, let me take care of him be right back. Okay, so the last thing I like to do with my lights involves the clock. Um, one of the things that I find very interesting is this clock here. We'll just leave it at that. So the clock itself, um, as you can see, it stores the time. Now this is military time. If you don't know that, if the number is greater than 12, you subtract 12 and that gives you your time uh, as far as the hours. Um, so we have our linked objects. Now we have these three events. There's no functions. We have two variables. What is the current time and is it nighttime? So I don't use the current time. Um, not sure you could probably compare numbers with that, um, but I'm sure I'll do another episode later with uh, that and counters. Um, but the main thing we want is, is it night? And the reason we want that is we're going to take our spotlight and we're going to say turn on, we're going to bring turn on, turn off for all three of these. Now we're not going to use the toggles. Um, in this specific instance you can't use the toggles and I'll explain that here in just a minute. So what we need is a if branch. So we're going to take that value. Oh, and then we need an event. We need something to trigger it. Now you can do, if you use, you seen there was three uh, on minute past, on hour past, on new day. So they're self-explanatory. Every time a minute passes based on the clock, the clock time, so that would trigger it, that would trigger it, that would trigger it, so on and so forth. So every minute it's going to trigger an event. Now that can, uh, if you've seen the last patch notes, they've been working on some memory leaks for looping um, programs. Um, but I like to do on our past, so we're going to use that one. Um, you can also do on new day for other situations. Um, but for this one here to deal with the lights, we're going to stick with this. So every time an hour passes, we're going to trigger this program. We're going to check, is it nighttime? Which is from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So when an hour passes, if it sees if it's 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., we're going to turn on the lights. And if it's not, when that hour passes, we're going to turn off the lights. Now we got a little bit of time here. Um, you see the lights are off, except for that one. And we'll just pick it up. Um, so I'm going to pause and we'll kind of wait around until uh, it starts becoming uh, 6 o'clock. And then uh, we will, um, I'll show you guys how this works. Alright, we got a few more minutes here. It's only a little bit after three. But I wanted to show you something else uh, you can do with this. I set, kind of set this up over here. We've got a tripwire, a button, 
and a light. Um, and you see they're all linked together. And what I did was I told it when we trip the laser, set the light color to red, turn the brightness to 100, and then turn the light on. And then the button, whenever we push the button, it just turns the light back off. So what this does is you can use this as a, a, a detection warning, where when the light's trigger, when the it's triggered, saying, "Hey, you know, something's nearby. You know, a bot, uh, or if they uh, release more monsters or something, you, just, you know, whenever you're, you know, come see what it is, you hit that and uh, see how that works." So it is getting uh, close to four, so I'm going to break again for a couple more minutes and I'll come back closer to six. All right, just in time. All right, so it's six o'clock. So now next time the, uh, the hourly check will run, it'll say, hey, it's between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. and it's going to turn on all the lights. I'm just going to stand back here. Uh, next thing I'm going to show you guys is uh, what I meant by using the light box as a counter. Um, and I'll show you guys what I mean where you can you know, t tell it to turn on and when it turns off to uh, program the furnace to turn on for a brief second so that you're not wasting, you know, sitting there wasting fuel. Oh, the suspense is killing me here. Make sure we got, so we got that light, that light, and that light. It looks like uh, the game time is, uh, one minute is one second real time. Which isn't too bad. Five, four, three... Two, one. There we go. You see all the lights turned on. They're all at 100% brightness. Let's go in here and we're just going to turn them off. But there you go. So every time an hour passes, it does that. Now you could, uh, just for that little delay, you can... Um, Right in here, we're going to add a weight. And what this does is this basically pauses the, the program for a certain amount of time. So one second is one minute. So this is, this is measured in seconds. So that would be one minute. So let's make that five minutes. Now it should right on the or should be a couple minutes after the hour that it'll turn on because it runs the check on every hour. So now it's running and it's doing the count and I think it's actually started at yeah 58, 59. There you go. Automatic lights. You know, fine tune that so that was at three. Uh, oh no, so we need to subtract three, so two. So there you go. And I'll let you guys kind of look at that better. So that's your basic. You can do every minute. Like I said, every minute you're running a program. Whoops. And you start getting a lot of programs running. Uh, it's going to start becoming very uh, resource unfriendly. Uh, but all right, so the next thing I'm going to show you real quick, just kind of throw together what I mean with the lights. All right, here I'm going to set one light there. I'm going to set one light there. Uh, now, if you look um, 
right here we haven't linked anything. The first one you link is going to be regular light. The second one you link is going to be light one. So we need to place a furnace. We're going to need some fuel. We won't need that anymore. And snap that in. Give it some fuel. I've already thrown batteries in the auto miner. And yeah, you got two in there. So and then we need the switch right there or the button. Uh, if you didn't know, see how mine it uh, it's not doing this. If you hit the see in the top right, align to player. If you toggle that, it locks it in a vertical position. I'm here in robots. Must not be. All right, so we need the furnace linked to that and the button. Normally, I link it to the button, but that's all right. So we have our two lights, the furnace, and the button. So what we want to do is we want to say, on successful mine attempt, which we are going to need to turn on. Uh, we'll use the button for that. On button push. Turn on the furnace. We'll need that down here. So let's set that so when the furnace turns on, we need to also turn on our main light, the one up here. So we need to go to light, turn on. Now that light, we want to set the brightness to 100%. And then we want to, that's all we're going to do there. Um, well, we'll go ahead and set that up. We're going to want a branch. We're going to run that and we want to check. So go to our variables. Does it have power? Well, we need to back this up a little bit. And then we also need to check, does our furnace have fuel. We're going to need an AND. We're going to run that. There's the bot. I hear him now. Goodbye. So, we actually don't need that. So, if we have both power and fuel, oh my god, they won't leave me alone. Alright, one sec. Alright, sorry about that. I think we're good for a while. So, if they both have uh, power and fuel, we're going to say on the light, we're going to set the color to green. And we're going to duplicate that and we're going to make that one red. Just like that. Now we need to add a weight because we're going to wait five seconds. Nope, not good. It's you. So wait five seconds and then we're going to run it again. Now what this does, this causes an infinite loop so that every time it goes through that loop it ch every five seconds it's going to check does that have fuel and does that have batteries and what i mean is see there it turned on the furnace turned the light green it's nice and bright you can see it from far away everything's working 
So let's go in here. I want to turn turn you off for a second. And we're going to turn off the light too. So that now we can work on. So now we have uh, the miner turning on, which you saw, the light going green, meaning everything's working okay. So now what we need to do is tell it when do we turn on the furnace, which I think we have. We'll get rid of that one. I have one here. So you see, that's all you need. That brief little one second, it's on, picks up the ore, drops out the ingot. So we're going to set that up. We're going to program that using that second light. So we don't want that one. We want that one now. So every time we successfully mine an ore, we're going to toggle the light. We're going to wait one second. And then we're going to check with the variable is the light on. So we're going to need a branch. So that's going to wait. It's going to run that. We're going to check is the light on. If the light is on, we're not going to do anything because that means the first time it comes through, it's going to turn the light on. So we need the second time it comes through, which is going to turn the light off. So then we're going to say, turn on the furnace. And then we're going to say, where's that wait? Wait one second. And then turn off the furnace. And then that's it. So now what that does, we got a bot coming. So now you see... But you see now that light is on. We don't want that light to be that bright. But I, I want you to show you we're actually you can set the brightness to zero, which is what we're gonna do. Now you see the second ore came out, it turned on, picked them up. There's your ingot. You're not wasting fuel. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say toggle light. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Set brightness zero. We made it. All right, so there's the second ore. The light turns off. But now, if you didn't see it, I told it when you toggle the light, make sure the brightness is at zero. So we're not going to be able to see that light come on at all. So we don't want it to interfere with the light of this one. So you see that? It turned kind of a gray. But it doesn't interfere with you know, the green light so you can see from your base you know, however far away you are. See the light go off? So it's still running perfectly. So that'll about do it for this one. Uh, let me know what you guys think if uh, there's any little tips and tricks. Now, of course, you can do uh, a lot more in this little program here with telling it to turn off and, uh, you know, in this part. Um, but I mainly wanted to show you about um, setting this up so that you can tell, hey, you know, does this have uh, what it needs to operate? And as long as it does, keep the light green. Uh, as soon as it doesn't, turn it red. But check it again, because I may come in and, you know, if it's just a battery, pop a battery in and it'll start running again. So you want it to automatically kick back on. But like I said, let me know what you guys think. If there's any uh, tips or anything, feel free to let me know. Um, but as always, we'll see you the next time. I think next we're going to get a little bit more into uh, these uh, miners and the oil derrick. Um, but let me know what you guys want to see in that one, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.